Allie wasn't lying. Velos was leaning against the back of the sofa, arms crossed, waiting for me. I knew I was going to get an earful as soon as our eyes met. Miss Lewis, how many times did we tell you that it's dangerous this time of year? Not even a hint of a preamble to that. I cannot fathom why you would ignore every warning and do something as monumentally stupid as taking a walk in the middle of the night. I took a deep breath and glanced at William. Listen, Velos, I think you're misunderstanding what happened. And that's my fault. What on earth are you talking about? What precisely am I misunderstanding? Okay, good. William? Kudos to you for getting this girl to actually open up about this and not hide it anymore. <laughs> After getting Allie in trouble for lying, of course. But you know what? Still. The truth is that I wasn't out there because I wanted to be. What does that mean? Nora! William squeezed my hand. Thank you. I've been... sleepwalking. Or... something. I'm not actually entirely sure what it is. <laughs> that was the third time. Or... no. The fourth, I think. It started right after we came back. Sleepwalking to the point you ended up outside? Are you seeing a doctor? I don't... think it's normal sleepwalking. So I've been hesitant to inflict the issue on a neurologist. Inflict the issue. I like that. The anger had definitely eased out of his expression, and now he just looked curious. That was definitely a good sign. What makes you say it's not normal? Thank God he stopped yelling. Well... Every time it happens, I sort of become aware that I'm dreaming. Or that I'm asleep at the very least. Or... Just not in control of my body. Everything's dark at first. And cold. And it just feels like my body is moving on its own. More than that, it feels like I'm pushed to the side, watching someone else control it. I have to really focus on making myself stop and wake up. Then I sort of snap back into reality, and I'm in control again. I don't know how to explain it, but it just doesn't seem like a normal thing. That isn't the story I got from Miss Fisher. I know. I asked her to hide the fact that I was sleepwalking, or whatever it is. I just... Given my past, I was just worried about telling you that part. Worried it would cause a... fuss. And what changed your mind? I glanced at William. <laughs> I like that Allie's probably like, Gee, thanks, I only told you, like, you know, if you told Velos, he, he would understand. No, I need you to lie. Okay. William, you should trust Velos. Okay, <laughs> I'll trust Velos. Allie, what the heck? I told... Oh, psh, <laughs> girl. <laughs> I glanced at William. I was... encouraged to trust you. Well, I'm pleased to know you've got at least some sense in that head. So taking the full story into consideration, I take it you were attacked after one of these episodes. I nodded. Um... There's... something else you should know, though? Velo shot Allie a scathing look. She just shrugged helplessly. Girl, I am so sorry. I need to, like, buy you breakfast or something. What else is there? Well, my brother has caught me sleepwalking a few times. I tried to play it off as me just going out for fresh air, but he knows that's not what's going on. He's been really suspicious of the club, too. Since the beginning, really. We'll have to deal with that. As far as we know, he's not a cryptic. Ugh, I hated the way he said that. He saw the attack. The whole thing. Did you know this? Allie flinched when he glared at her again. Well? Look, I asked her to keep it a secret. Spencer's been through a lot. 
and I didn't want him to deal with people badgering him, erasing his memories, or regist registering him into directories. Or him having to deal with all this. I gestured to the club. I don't think he'd cope with it all. We can't leave this alone. If he saw what happened, then he knows. Look, if there was an exposure to the supernatural, then it probably happened five years ago anyway. I don't know if you know about that. I've looked into the case file at the agency. Wait, there's a case file? <sighs> we obviously looked into that incident when it happened. There was a rash of disappearances that went on at the same time you vanished, and you were the only one to come back. Clearly, it warranted an investigation. The moment he said that, everything about my current situation flew out of my head. Did you... Did you find out anything? I mean, about me? Where I was? What happened to me? What happened to Spencer? Can I see the case file? It's unlikely you'll be allowed to look at it. And the information is... sparse. It wasn't looked into deeply as it was deemed unrelated to the other incidents. After all, you came back safely. The investigation team within PSI was busy with the other disappearances. PSI? Paranormal Surveillance and Investigation. It's the department at the agency that handles this sort of thing. And as I said, they were concerned with the missing persons. By the time anyone was free to look into your case, your family had left the state. Well... Great. And that hope evaporated pretty much as soon as it was born. But, given your current status, you may be correct about the exposure happening at that time. Based on the file, it seems something unusual happened to your brother at any rate. Yeah. That eye injury was never explained. Not to mention, the things he said about me back then. Things he clearly still believes. He rubbed his chin thoughtfully, a deep frown on his face. If that's the case, we can hardly erase five years' worth of memories. Ah. I really, really think that any attempts to approach Spencer should be handled carefully. And you did promise you would let us handle it. That was before I knew he was poking about. Look, he's not going to tell anyone anything. He learned that lesson the hard way. If he hasn't said anything in five years, he's not going to suddenly say something now. Perhaps... you're right. But I can't just ignore this. I will... for the time being, allow Miss Fisher to keep an eye on your brother. As a representative of the agency, which means you will keep me apprised of the situation if you wish to keep your internship. I understand. No more deception. Now that Nora decided to trust you, there's no need for it. I suppose I should be grateful Mr. Lee apparently took some sense into you. Thank you. For... not rushing off to mess with my brother's head. It remains to be seen how we're going to handle your brother, Miss Lewis. Do remember that. In the meantime, I'd like some more information about this cryptic that attacked you. And we need to give some thought to keeping you safe going forward. I wonder if Nora could draw us a quick sketch of it. He moved around the sofa to one of the wing back chairs and motioned me to the sofa. Have a seat, please. It had been a long day, not the least because of a long, tough talk with Velos in the club room. I hadn't really been prepared for the whole truth to come out. There was a part of me that felt relieved, though. Good. I was still pretty anxious about it all, but Philo seemed content to, at least for the time being, allow Allie to be in charge of keeping track of Spencer. And in the meantime, they were going to keep an eye out for that thing I saw. Velos, unfortunately, didn't have much to go on. He said there were quite a few odd things lurking about town, especially this time of year when new things were drifting in. And old things that usually stayed quiet were starting to stir and wake up. 
Apparently, my description wasn't all that helpful, and it could be any number of things. Guess the smoky tendrils look was in for ghosts these days. When I finally got up to my room, I dropped my things on the floor and flopped onto my bed with a groan. My phone chimed almost instantly. A text from William. Is everything okay there? Yeah, no problem. Thanks for checking on me. Okay. Be careful. I will, don't worry. I have Shelly's thingies. I'm sure they'll work. I smiled slightly as I set my phone on the nightstand. Ugh, so tired. But I wanted to write down everything that happened. I warily grabbed my backpack and pulled out my journal. Come in! I was surprised to see Spencer come in instead of Mom. We looked at each other silently. I'm shocked he knocked. To be honest, neither of us had said a word since the night I was attacked. I felt suddenly awkward facing him especially since I had no idea what he was going to say. He shut the door behind him and came toward my bed. I sat up immediately on edge. I mean, at least it's the middle of the day and Mom is home, so he shouldn't be trying to kill us? Fingers crossed. Spencer paused, looking at something on the floor. Without a word, he bent to pick up my cell phone. Oh, I didn't hear that fall. He set the phone back on the nightstand. I wanted to talk. I figured as much. His gaze fell on the notebook. I quickly flipped the cover shut. I'm surprised you still use that code. It's convenient, since no one else can read it but me. Since you forgot it and all. Yeah. Did you want something? Answers. I want to know everything. I know something is going on. And now you know that I do. So there's no reason to lie anymore. Tell me who you really are. Look, I'm not getting into that who are you really nonsense with you. But just so you know, I want answers too. Ever since we moved back and all this... This weird stuff started happening. I've been looking for answers. It's not like it's been just since we moved back. Fine. It's been going on for years and I'm the only one out of the loop on it. Whatever. Why don't you tell me what you know? Then I'll tell you what I know. For instance, what happened five years ago? He stiffened when I said that. Not that easy, is it? So I guess I'm not the only one keeping things to myself. When you really want to talk, I will too. <laughs> A deadpan look. I'm like, bleh, fine. Yeah, you can't just bully answers out of me and not share anything, sir. So chew on that for a little bit. So impressed that he actually knocked and came in not yelling. Progress, little baby steps. He stared at me a minute longer and then left without another word. I let out a long sigh and fell back on my bed. Bleh. I feel you there. My phone chimed again. I went to reach for it when I realized it wasn't on the nightstand. It was on the floor, a few inches from the bottom of my bed. William, have you misplaced a friend? Again? I picked it up and checked it. Another text from William. <laughs> It's six in the evening. Good night, sir. It's too early. Good night. You too. Try to sleep, okay? Yeah, I will. I set my phone in the center of the night table this time. I really just wanted to sleep and not deal with any of this. Spencer least of all. I should probably go spread my herb barrier thing. But first, I went to make sure my alarm clock was set because without it, I'd probably sleep until noon the following day. When I rolled over and reached for the clock, I realized my phone was gone. Okay, I suddenly, my brain just like clicked now. Duh. Um, I just realized the ghost is mo trying to get rid of it because William is currently texting her. He's like, oh, if I 
remove it from her sight, maybe she won't find it. And then William will think that she doesn't care about him because she's not responding to his texts. Wahahaha. <laughs> Ugh. This ghost is so annoying. Again. I peeked over the edge of the bed and there it was on the floor again. Okay, so this ghost is fairly limited in what it can do. It can, like, move things, but not very far. It's not like he, it can just pick it up and, like, go out of the room with it or chuck it out the window or something. Hmm. With a frown, I picked it up and set it back on the night table, then went to get ready for bed, really hoping I was able to sleep okay. Yeah, about that. Chapter 5. Bits of Broken Glass. Bits of bits of broken glass. In my dream, I was standing outside on a hill above a dark forest. The cold breeze lifted my hair from my shoulders, sending a pleasant chill down my back. White strands of hair blew across my eyes, and I lifted long, pale fingers to sweep them back behind pointed ears. The wind blows out of the gates of the day. The wind blows over the lonely of heart. And the lonely of heart is withered away while the fairies dance in a place apart. The words torn from my lips by the wind almost as soon as I spoke them felt quaint and old. There was a sense of nostalgia around them, and I thought I recognized the poem they were from, though I couldn't remember who wrote it. In the distance and on the horizon was a dark hill atop which was a ring of white trees. They had to be enormous, given their size and the hill's distance. Something sparkled between the, the tree trunks. I reached my hand out to it, a deep sense of longing washing over me. I know that place. That's... I started awake to the sound of my clock blaring. Rolling over, I slapped the top of the clock a few times, finally silencing the alarm. You stayed in bed. What was that dream? It was already slipping away from me. That white hair. I'd had that sort of dream before, enough to know the face I'd had, though I hadn't seen myself in this one, but I'd seen her before. Sometimes I dreamed I was, I was her. Sometimes I just watched her. A strange, elf-like figure who had haunted my sketches and paintings for years. And, of course, my dreams. I sat up with a groan, rubbing my head. What was that poem I was quoting? The exact lines had already faded beyond recall. I shrugged it off as unimportant. I was still in my bed. That was what really mattered. The past few days had been desperately trying to get back to normal. It wasn't quite there yet. I still had moments where I'd wake up in a panic, or standing in my room in the middle of the night, but it was better. I wasn't leaving my room, which was the most important thing. That at least had a lid on it for now. The weird dreams? Well, I was kind of used to those already anyway. I'll trade weird dreams for sleepwalking any day. I threw the blankets off, rubbing my arms when I realized how cold it was in the room. Yeesh. Maybe someone turned the heat down too low? It was freezing. I swung my feet over the edge of the bed, wondering if Spencer was already out of the bathroom. Ow! Literally broken glass, huh? I jerked my feet back in pain the moment they touched the floor. On inspection, I didn't see anything that really stood out. The sole of one foot was a little red, but neither was tender to the touch. Hmm. Oh no, did the ghost douse the entire room in the stuff so that now you <laughs> um Spencer I need help probably the phone's gone I can't text William or Allie oh barf oh this ghost they're way worse than Sean and Derek <laughs> I shot a glance toward the door where my little barrier of herbs was presumably still on the floor keeping me inside could that be the cause it was the only thing I could think of but if so I w it would mean I had tried pretty hard to leave but why why am I trying so hard to get out at night I sat there for a moment chewing my lip as I contemplated that I had no answer for it really but I was glad the barrier was working 
I set my foot back on the carpet and flexed my toes. Okay. Maybe that isn't what happened. I was really worried about that. It was from last night when she was trying to cross the, the threshold. Whew. Man. That would have been too much. Okay. I take it back, ghost. You're not the worst yet, but you're, you're getting there. Now that the horror from the weekend attack was starting to fade, I was able to face it with a little more clarity. Nothing had happened since then, so it didn't seem like it was a random attack. So it, so it did seem like it was a random attack. Me being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Which meant as long as I stayed inside, everything would be okay. So the barrier was working. No matter how hard I wanted to get out and go somewhere else, I was safe. And that's what really mattered. Didn't mean I didn't need to find out why I was sleepwalking in the first place, though. Still, I need to be sure to thank Shelly properly. The first order of business after getting out of bed was to go undo the door barrier with the nullifying herbs, but... <sighs> okay, well, it's not as bad, but it's... I mean, I can get out of bed, but it's not... I guess I'm going out the window. When I checked the desk drawer from my herb jars... Gone. A quick glance around the room didn't immediately reveal their location, and I was pretty sure I'd put them up anyway. <laughs> I stiffened at the sound of glass being set down behind me, and sure enough, the jar of herbs was on the windowsill when it definitely had not been there a minute ago. And then, the brownie was chattering angrily somewhere, but I didn't see it. Can you see what's bothering me, Brownie? Not that I, not that you can tell me, but... I bit back the urge to kick something. Why it was picking on me now, I didn't know, but this kind of thing had been happening way too much lately. It's not the Brownie's fault! <sighs> I went to retrieve the jar, turning it over in my hands. It wasn't broken, damaged, or messed up in any way, thankfully. I'm going to have to find a way to appease that stupid thing. I should have done it earlier when its target was still Spencer, but I'd had so much to deal with that I had never really gotten around to it. It was good that it had apparently forgiven Spencer for whatever he'd done to make it mad, but now that I was the target, I definitely wasn't going to be able to put up with this stuff. Wait, did you do it? No, you haven't- you hadn't appeased it. But it stopped? Bugging Spencer, really? Strangeness. Especially because, for me, things like the herb jars were necessary for my safety. It wasn't the same as a toothbrush being tossed in the toilet or missing homework. I wonder if she'll realize that the brownie couldn't mess with her herbs because it's also a fairy and would be hurt by the fairy bane. Missing homework didn't get you killed. The problem was that I couldn't think of anything I had done to upset it. Then again, fairies were notoriously sensitive souls, so who even knew? Still, though... What was weird was that the pranks on me were different from the kind it had played on Spencer. Things would go missing, but immediately show up again. Something would fall over, then right itself. It was like it couldn't make up its mind as if it was mad at me or not. Plus, I saw it roaming around, chattering in its dried leaf voice as if complaining to someone... ...or something. Or I'd catch it sitting in my windowsill, glowering at nothing. Mm-hmm. I wonder if the brownie's actually helping her. <laughs> From the pranks being worse than they would otherwise be. Hmm. Despite all the prowling around and seeming irritated, it was apparently rather indecisive about whether it really wanted to take its anger out on me. I had no idea what was going on with it. Ugh. Fairy drama. So annoying. I was trying to not let it bother me. So far, it was more a minor annoyance than anything, and I had other things to focus on. Besides, at least it was leaving Spencer alone now. Still, I seriously needed to do some reading on coexisting with brownies very soon. At any rate, now that I had located my jars, I took the herbs and dispelled the door barrier. And the one in the window that I had done out of fear sleeping me might get desperate. Uh-huh. Spencer had already vacated the bathroom, so I went in to clean up and brush my teeth. It was good to see that the circles under my eyes had faded. I yawned and finished rinsing my mouth. Laura. 
I whirled around at the sound of the voice. Nothing was there. I stood still, eyes darting around the room. I had been so sure I'd heard my name. It had been quiet, but very clear. Goosebumps rose on my arms, and I was overcome with the feeling of something right behind me. It was stupid, of course. There was nothing behind me but the sink and mirror. There was definitely nothing that could be back there. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think I'm just gonna... <laughs> I'm just gonna get out of here. <laughs> nope. As much as I knew there was nothing back there, I wasn't going to chance it. Between ghostly encounters in the woods, the stupid house brownies, sleepwalking... I didn't want to deal with anything else that might pop up in my life, and I could not handle something creepy lurking in the mirror. If nothing was there, great! I wasn't going to find out, though. I'm out. I fled the bathroom and slammed the door shut behind me without looking back. I really did hear my name, though. It wasn't the brownie. I'd never heard it speak in a regular voice. Ugh. I didn't want to dwell on it too much. I tried to shake off the feeling of unease. I took several deep breaths, trying to slow my heart rate as I went to finish getting dressed for school. Fortunately, there were no further annoying brownie mishaps, and I was able to dress in peace. Poor brownie, getting blamed for everything. Grabbing my phone, I headed out my door and down the front stairs. Oh. When I nearly collided with Spencer about halfway down, he moved out of the way silently and waited for me to go past. Um. I'll... I mean, he didn't turn around, he just moved so that I could go by, so maybe I shouldn't talk to him. Especially not before school. I don't know. I feel if he had seen what happened in the bathroom, he would probably talk to me about it. I didn't say anything as I went past. We still hadn't really spoken since the weekend. I wasn't sure what to think about that. He'd been less hostile, but that might just have been the lack of speaking to each other. Well, and the lack of brownie pranks. That, at least, was probably putting him in a more amicable mood. Or, at the very least, a more neutral one. Allie was asking about him every single day, basically wanting a report on if he was up to anything. Which he wasn't. But I didn't want to have to tell her about anything weird he'd said or done. So, better not to talk to him at all. Alright. Pouring myself a cup of coffee, I flopped down on the island. As usual, Mom had already set out the egg toast and some fruit. Biting back a yawn, I reached for my toast, figuring I'd eat at least a little of it so Mom wouldn't complain. And not feeling like a zombie meant I was actually kind of hungry, too. Come to think of it, it felt like this was the for first semi-normal morning I'd had for a while. It was... nice. You know, voices behind you in the bathroom whispering your name. Pretty semi-normal. I lifted the toast, absently staring at the windows, I wondered what my next course of action would be. Oh. I paused when something tugged at my leg. And, of course, there was the crackling, twiggy sound of the brownie's voice. Brownie, what are you trying to tell me? What does that stupid thing want? Don't kick it! Good grief. Brownie, brownie over here trying to save your life, girl. Oh my god. It was like having an incredibly annoying pet that was half cat and half toddler. With a long, suffering sigh, I glanced down at the little beast tugging at my leg. What do you want? It immediately released me and started up the side of the island with a surprising amount of dexterity. Like a weird little pantless spider. <laughs> then again, all spiders are pantsless, so that comparison doesn't really work, does it? What are you doing exactly? Before I could react, it was on the table and touching my food. Oh. Did the ghost put something bad on it? Hey! That's... Ugh. Gross. Guess that meant no breakfast for me. 
Considering the way it's scrabbled around on the floor, I highly doubted his hands were clean. <laughs> I rested my elbows on the tile, watching it with annoyance. I really don't know why you suddenly hate me. It didn't respond to what I was saying, but it did fish something out of my toast. Whatever it was caught the light as the brownie held it up and looked at me expectantly. Eh? It's showing me something? I leaned down and... Glass? Oh man, that was really bad. I was expecting like... <laughs> you know... Hot pepper sprinkles or something had been put on. Or a copious amount of cinnamon. Just to make it like really disgusting. Glass. Okay, that's getting dangerous. My eyes widened. Glass in my food? What? I've nearly eaten that! Brownie, you saved me! The brownie chattered at me and pitched the glass across the kitchen. Oh, come on! Someone's going to step on that. Good grief. By the time I'd retrieved the broom and turned around, it was already launching my toast into the trash bin. Well, thank you. Okay, okay, I get it. I'm not going to eat it. Jeez. I am so confused. The brownie was pranking me like mad lately, but it stopped me from eating glass-filled toast. If it had put the glass there in the first place, why would it stop me from eating it? But if it hadn't put the glass there, who had? Glass and food is going a bit beyond a prank anyway. No, it's not Spencer either. Gosh, darn it. I heard Spencer's footsteps coming down the stairs and a little seed of suspicion formed at the back of my mind, but I shrugged it off. No, I didn't think he'd go to that length. What purpose would it serve anyway? Yeah, like, considering he walked you back to the house and was like, I'm not letting you out of my sight or anything happen to you. I mean, I didn't exactly know the full details of what happened to people who ate a piece of glass, but it couldn't be good. Spencer was a creep, but he wouldn't try to kill me. <laughs> no! Definitely not. But if it wasn't him and it wasn't the brownie, then how did glass get in my toast? It would have to mean something else did it. Something else that was also in the house. I didn't like that thought at all. It was surely more likely that it had been an accident, right? Yeah, I'm sure Mom would definitely not make sure that there was no glass in your food. I mean, it was plausible that someone broke something and the glass made its way into the cookware. It was hard to believe Mom wouldn't notice, but anything was possible. Either way, I was going to need to be more careful. Maybe what I needed wasn't a way to appease the brownie, but to thank it. As soon as I got everything cleaned up, I grabbed my things and hurried outside, still mulling it over. Ugh, too much to worry about. <laughs>